Sponsored by The Glass Jug. Located just off State Road 55 in Durham, The Glass Jug is the only place in the Triangle where you can browse a selection of hundreds of different craft beers, sit and enjoy one of 16 different beers on tap, and then take home a counter-pressure-filled growler of your favorite draft beer. Their growler filling technology ensures beer freshness and carbonation for much longer than growlers filled from the tap. Join the Glass Jug for free testing events every Thursday at 5 p.m. We'll see you at the Glass Jug. Hi, I'm Glenn. Dave's behind the camera. Welcome to another episode of NC Beer Buzz. We're the NC Beer Guys. We promote more kind of craft beer online at ncbeerguys.com. We're pleased to be downtown Raleigh today on West Morgan Street, around the corner from the Irregardless Cafe and Charlie Goodnights. And we're here at Trophy Brewing Company with Les Stewart. Brewer here. Thanks for having us in. My pleasure. Thanks for coming. We've been in the front side several times. First time we've been on the back. It's an enormous facility back here, as you can see. <laughs> yeah, we're squeezed in here. And you're seeing it all in this shot, I think. <laughs> That's just about it. We're going to talk a little bit about the food side, too. This is one of the few breweries that has a great food selection. They're almost as well known for their food, probably, as they are for their pizza. That's true. That's true. We get that a lot. I'm sure. So we're going to talk about that first. But since you're the brewer and we got him here, let's talk about how Trophy came to be and your inspiration. You've been involved since the get go. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's been a couple years in now. Are we in two years? years in yet? It's almost two years in. So I started brewing here uh, basically at the end of December of 2012. So okay. it's at almost two years. Now how did you get involved with the conception? So I was I was brought in. Uh, it, this is uh, I, I was kind of brought into this dream, and it's been a it's been a wild ride. Um, Chris and Woody uh, of Busy Bee Cafe, right? That's yeah, yeah. Exactly. They are, Chris right. Bowers, uh, Woody Lockwood of uh, the owners of um, the Busy Bee Cafe, and of course, is a great beer institution itself. Mm -hmm. uh, wanted to kind of expand uh, what they were doing with beer, so they always kind of had this dream of opening a brewery. So they brought me in. At that point in time, I was I was just doing homebrew really, you know, in, in, at, a, at a large scale, I guess, and uh, working... Yeah, I was say, you're not new to the brew scene. No, no, I'm not. Yeah, exactly. Right. I've certainly been brewing for a long time. Um, I was uh, I was actually curating a uh, beer program at another restaurant at the time, wanting to kind of break into the industry, um, but thought it would be in, a, in the bottle shop kind of side of things, rather than a brewing side okay. of things. They brought me in and they said, come and do this. And I was like, that's going to be tough. Right. They're like, you've got a year. You know, take your time. Figure read, it out. Figure it out. And I read as many books as I could get my hands on. I fortunately had the ability to, to go into a lot of my friends who are commercial brewers, uh, brew houses, and brew with them and experience, you know, ask all kinds of questions about how to make that important you jump from, step it up from, from home, home brew, to commercial. small batch, exactly. to larger batches. Now, did they already have a facility, a site, or that was part of the search? That was part of the search. So we went through a couple of different sites ultimately landed on this and it's a little bit tighter than we initially planned so it kind of downscaled uh, our, our the size of our system and it was initially much tighter than it is today oh even, yeah even yeah. two years in when we first opened up it was just the tap room that's right and the, uh, I guess this existing part of the brewery right but the whole other side the cooking side came a little bit after the front that's exactly right as did the patio so we right. built all that stuff on since then and the front patio as well which we got the beer garden mm -hmm. um, so we added probably 70% capacity of seats compared to what our initial uh what we initially opened with. And speaking of capacity, we're, we're, we said we were tight. Mm -hmm. What is production capacity? We see a lot of stainless. So yeah, it's a really, you know, we were talking about jumping from the homebrew scale to commercial. This has actually been really nice because we jumped into a three barrel system. Mm -hmm. So we have a three barrel stout tanks and kettle system. I have seven fermenters. Um, we run them at a hundred percent. Right. Um, so we're on track to produce about 625 barrels uh, this year, which is, uh, I think, pretty remarkable. For, yeah, especially for, for the space. Exactly. I feel good about that. Now, we recognized from the get-go, the buzz was great even before you opened. Yeah. It's going to be great. And then it lived up to it. I mean, the first couple of nights, we were in here, I think, the second night you were open, and we couldn't even, we, we did get in, but it was like, you know, it was It was packed. pretty tight, certainly. But still, the buzz has continued. It's been good. I mean, everybody can't maintain that. Do you attribute that to the quality or to the location or what? what, what what's special about Trophy? It's special. It's it's a little bit of both, and it's a little bit of luck too. I think. Okay. Um, I, I we do. You know, one thing that's really nice about being this size is it makes our brewery very nimble. Mm -hmm. So we can. It's easy for us to get enough of a very special hops 
to do a batch with. And that's not so easy to do. Because you've not got to have a huge batch exactly. to work with. Exactly. Yeah, so I don't have to necessarily have the contract on that on that real on that, you know, tough southern hemisphere hop or something like that. For the most part, I can get my hands on enough to do a batch with. So we've been able to perhaps a little have a little more flexibility with regard to some of the harder to get ingredients that we've had. So that's you know number one. We're able to really focus on the small batch beers. Um, on the pizza side of things, we've been really lucky. We've had a lot of great talent come through our kitchen. Um, I think it's been a, the philosophy has contributed to the quality of the, uh, the pizza. And I'd like to think probably as the beer as well, which is very hands off. We want people that show an interest in producing a creative. And then let them right? be themselves. Exactly, yeah. So in addition to that, the space, trying to make the space work in a way that's comfortable. But yet maximum efficiency exactly. can get it. Yeah, I think that a lot of that came from Chris and Woody's experience, you know, they have a lot of really great uh, expertise with regard to making a restaurant work really efficient. And in not an enormous size facility. Right. Because they're used to some fairly small locations. Exactly, too. yeah. Our chef is, uh, you know, deals with a relatively small kitchen over at the Busy mm -hmm. Bee and uh, was able to take some of the things he learned over there and, and turn them into uh, things that contributed well. You share some resources with Busy Bee then or not? Occasionally, yes. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll, uh, Mostly personnel. Um, we will we'll, personnel will go back and forth, and that's good for the personnel to get experience in two different. Sure, places. it keeps them fresh in both locations. Yeah. So there are some flagships, trophy flagships that we always get. There are a couple, but, and I, but I would never say always because it often changes. It does. It does, and that's kind of the other thing that we kind of uh, pride ourselves on is. We, every time you come in here, you'll find a different pizza on the menu because we change that out daily. Mm -hmm. And you'll find different beers on tap because we are constantly brewing beers that we've never brewed before. One-off beers, experimenting, having a lot of fun, taking And that's part of the attraction too, I think. I mean, it's always something new and different, even if it's still a trophy location, a trophy brand. You just don't know when you walk in the door what you might find that's great and exciting. Yeah, and that's, that's our motto or something. That's <laughs> so, our motto. Yeah, exactly. Like that. Right. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and for you personally, has it been all you thought it would be more? I mean, it's a little overwhelming in some senses, I would think. It has been. You know, when we opened, we were, when we were running the numbers, we thought, okay, we'll have enough to supply ourselves with beer, and we should be able to push a little bit out into the market. At first, you didn't do that. And since though, you were struggling at first, I think, to just meet the demand here. Yeah, that's true. And honestly, that's it's not something that's gone away. But, but. I know you can get some trophy beer out, not on this premises only now. That's more or less true. So we only have one account that we keep regularly okay. um, at Pools Diner, mm -hmm. and uh, that's a really great account for us in a, in a kind of interesting way because they, they're, you know, you get a lot of wine focused crowd over there, so they, they go through just enough beer for us to keep up with their demand. Okay. Um, outside of that, we we unfortunately have to say no to a lot of places that want to bring our beer in at this point. Because you just have to meet your own demand first. Exactly. And so that's been the challenge. So uh, that's been the stress part of it. You know, just making sure that I can produce the beers I want to produce on the schedule I would like to produce them and make sure we have enough. With uh, the limitations of the size and facility. Exactly. So we're going to figure out how to grow. What's next? So plus growth. What yeah. Are we um, well, we haven't we haven't finalized the location yet, but we are certainly looking to to build another place and uh, and build a second kind of trophy and uh, uh, just another location for the trophy. What we know is trophy. Exactly. We're not going to change anything here. Right. As far as we're concerned, this works really this well. This is a hit. Let's, let's roll with it. Exactly. So this is going to become kind of our lab. This is where we're going to have a lot of fun and try uh, try beers that are that are uh, off the beaten path. And we'll do that to some extent in our larger brewery too. And you'll brew there too, a new, new place. Exactly, okay. yeah. The new place will have a larger uh, larger system to the tune of 20 or 30 barrels, mm -hmm. and um, as opposed to three barrels. And um, we'll be able to produce a lot of beer. We're gonna have another uh, tap room. Um, and uh, yeah, that's gonna be a fun kind of growth. And when do we hope that might be online? Is that like next year or yeah. maybe in a uh, year or two? Give us, a, you know, a year, you know, year and a half. Keep an so eye on it. It's a definite plan. Oh yes. But it's a little bit from fruition. Yeah. Point. Yeah. We're certainly working very hard on it right now. So. And Woody and Chris are doing a bottle shop. We want to talk. We didn't come and talk about a bottle shop. Yeah. But briefly, they are since they're all in this together. They are. Yes. Exactly. So as you can imagine, as you kind of have seen, they've gone from a great beer bar to a mm -hmm. to a brewery and restaurant, and kind of we're going to a different kind of brewery now. And another part of their kind of greater beer scheme is to uh, is to bring in a bottle shop into the mix. And it'll also have a tap room with trophy beer. It, it 
will it will have probably had some trophy beer over I here. Imagine we, we have uh, we pursued the uh, the what, what's commonly referred to now as the pig founder exemption, mm -hmm. which allows us to serve our beer at our other locations, which previously was against the law in North Carolina. Right. Um, so we're once we get that done, then we'll be able to move at least a little bit of beer over there and a little bit of beer at uh, at Busy Bee as well. So we're going to draw us to a close. We're talking about two, two more things. I want to talk about the trophy beer again. Is there a signature to the trophy beer? I mean, is from time, I know you produce across a lot of styles, right. a lot of different kind of beers, but is something that drives you like almost every beer starts with something that says trophy? Um, it's not something that's necessary. It's I have favorite parts. So I, for example, am a fan of Galaxy Hops as, as, as dry editions, and I like I like the very early editions of Magnum uh, Magnum. Which Vigil. doesn't mean you can always do it, right? Exactly. But it's kind of a thing that you tend right. to do. Exactly. So the styles that I'm working in, if I can work those kind of signature components in there, then you can start to start to realize that there's a pattern that will kind of show up in trophy beers. Um, there, you know, there I probably only used. Them five or so different yeast strains, mm -hmm. uh, only two of which are do we keep as house strains here. Right. Um, but inside of that, I would build a lot of styles around a certain strain. And because I know that strain, I'm very familiar with it. And that way I know, even when I'm doing a beer as a one-off beer that I've never done before, generally at least for part of it, how it's going to go. So that way I can focus on the part that I don't know what's mm -hmm. going to happen and really put my energy into designing that. On the, on the there. Right, right, exactly. And the, the pizza, do we always pair the pizza with the beer? The pizza is just gourmet pizza. Right. And who comes up with those recipes and, and that's menus? That's the kitchen. It's uh, We have a wonderful sous chef here, as well as a chef. Uh, our chef is uh, Dave Mitchell over at Busy Bee. He's the executive chef and covers over here as well. Often you'll find him over here. Uh, Mark Russell is our sous chef over here. He's responsible all the time over here. Um, and that menu's always changing? The menu, so we have a base of, I believe it's nine pies that are always the same. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have, every night, we have a different meat feature and a different veg veggie feature. Right. So that's where they really get to have fun. So while while there's a lot of uh, creativity in a regular menu, also every day you get to see something new. And the new stuff's a lot of fun because you'll see things like duck confit on pies and right. uh, steak and eggs and um, things you just don't think about. Right, exactly, pie. short rib. Oh man, some really fun ideas coming. So in some ways, that mirrors what you do with the beer. That's the idea. Exactly. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> Thanks for having us in, It's my pleasure. We want to remind our viewers, if you get to Raleigh and get a chance, you need to stop by Trophy because you won't get Trophy beer out where you are if you're not here in Raleigh and probably here at Trophy unless you get one of the limited places that has it. So until next time, this is Glenn and Dave with NC Beer Guys, another episode of NC Beer Buzz reminding you, drink local and keep your beer dollars in North Carolina.